Welcome back to the fourth of the Povre lessons. Going to show you a few new things today. First off, I'm going to show you how to create an include file. Much like the colors.inc file that we've had at the top of the previous lessons. Now, today's lesson, I'm going to follow on from the last lesson. And to do that, I've actually copied all of the code that was in lesson three. And I've copied that into the lesson four file that I'm going to be working with today. As we go through these lessons, the three cylinders that we've got here that are highlighting the three directions, the up and down, the left and right, and the forwards and backwards, they're going to be in a number of these lessons. So rather than leave them the whole definition for each cylinder within the Povre SDL file here, I'm going to copy that out and put that into an include file that we can include on all our future uh, Povre tutorials. And that way, you won't have to keep looking and scrolling up and down past all the code that defines those cylinders. It'll be in another file out of the way. So I'll show you how to do that. First of all, go up here. I'm going to click New to create a new file. Then nip back to Lesson 4. I'm going to select the code for the three cylinders, and then I'm going to cut that out of there. Go to my new file. I'm going to paste that information for the cylinders there. And now I'm going to save that file. Now this is going into the same folder where the lessons are. And I'll call this my first include and then dot ink on the end. That's just a convention with Povray that if it's an include file, it ends with dot ink. So now back to lesson four. And at the top, like we've got that other include, I'll type in a new include. And this one's going to call my first include dot ink. So I'll run this now. And you can see it's exactly the same as it was during lesson three. Those three cylinders are there, but they're not actually within my scene. They're not in that SDL code at all, except via this include statement. What's happening in the background is that when this, this scene is being created by Povray, the first thing it's doing is loading the colors.inc file, then it loads the my include file, and then it reads the text that's actually in this file. And it adds them all together and creates the final scene. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you, I need a second box for. So I'm going to copy the first box and paste that. So we've now got two boxes. But at the moment, if I run this scene, you'll still only see one. And that's because the second box is defined in exactly the same coordinates and exactly the same size and exactly the same color as the first box. So I'm going to move my second box using a command you haven't seen yet. Translate. What that means is move this box effectively. And I'm going to say move it to the left three coordinates. Now this is a 3D vector, the same as you've seen when it defining shapes within Povray. But instead of marking a corner of the box or the end of the cylinder, this is actually a command to translate. That is to move the box. So I'm saying move the whole box three to the left. So if I run this, and you can see we've got two boxes now. There were two before, but they were in exactly the same space, so you couldn't see them. I've got another trick I'm going to show you now. This is a bit of a gotcha for people just starting Povre. Now, you saw before the rotate command. I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to rotate our first box. That's the one that's at zero, 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 but I'm going to rotate it by minus 35 degrees. So let's have a look at that. OK, so you can see the first box has rotated. I'm now going to issue the same rotate command on the second box. Now, you may not have expected to see the picture looking quite like that. The first box has stayed where it is, obviously, and rotated 35 degrees without moving. But the second box, although it has rotated 35 degrees, it's also moved. 
Before, it was a the green cylinder went straight through the middle of it, but as you can see, it's rotated towards the camera. Now, the reason this has happened is because we translated it away from zero, zero, zero. When you issue a rotate command, it rotates the object around zero, zero, zero. So by moving it three spaces to the left and then issuing the rotate command, what we've actually done is rotated it not where it is, but around zero, zero, zero. Let me increase the rotation on this second box just to show you what really happens here. So I'm rotating it more. You can see it's got closer to the camera. Let me move it all the way up to 90. You can see it's now gone through a full 90 degrees from the green bar onto the yellow one. Let's move it up to 110. And you can see it's actually rotating around that 0, 0, 0. There you go. And now I'll put it back onto the green, green bar back at zero again. So it's not rotated. There you go. If I actually want to rotate it so it looks the same as the box that's at zero, 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 that's easy enough to do. But what I have to do is move the rotate command for this box above the translate. The Povray engine will look at the definition for the box then it'll carry out the rotate command here and then it'll do the translation. Before it was doing the translation and then the rotate. So if I tell this to translate, oh, sorry, rotate by minus 35 again and then translate it, what you should say is two boxes right next to each other with the same rotation. There you go. You can see that they've both been rotated except one has also been translated. Here ends lesson four.